Steve Passanelli with Tech Savvy Agent. Today I want to talk to you about the keyword tool. I posted to our Facebook page a, a little while ago uh, a comment about the keyword tool and how you guys were using it and a lot of you guys said you were using it all the time but some people said hey well, what the heck is the keyword tool. Uh, so I wanted to do a post here today and give it its own section on our blog because we have talked about it before in the past uh, but we never we never had its own section with some, uh, some extra tips in there thrown in on how to use the keyword tool. So uh, this is going to be a post for beginners as well as uh, advanced keyword tool users if you don't know what the uh, the match types uh, checkboxes are on the left hand side of the screen. We'll explain that, go over a little bit of insights as well. Um, and maybe maybe even some of you uh, advanced users might, might pick up a thing or two. So let's get started. For the beginners out there, the keyword tool is, is what you're going to want to use before you buy a domain name, before you write a blog post, before you decide to do a pay-per-click campaign. Uh, it's just a great thing to use to research what people are, are searching for on Google. So we don't know if people are searching for homes for sale in Philadelphia or Philadelphia homes for sale, but the keyword tool does and allows us to, to find out that information and use it to our advantage. Um, and, and so many different ways and multiple forms depending on uh, what you're doing in terms of your marketing. So it's easy to find if you just go to Google and type in the keyword tool. Let's click on that. Let's try it again. Go to Google, type in the keyword tool. It'll pop right up there. And it's the first entry. I'm going to click on it. It takes me right to my screen. Uh, if you have a Google account, make sure you're logged in because then you won't have to do that little CAPTCHA phrase that they have on the bottom there. And that's just a pain. So I'm going to type in a phrase or something I think people are typing into Google that I may want to write about on my blog or perhaps I'm buying a domain name and I want to match that domain name up with a common search phrase because that plays a, a small role uh, in, in getting a good search engine optimization. So uh, let's type in houses in Philadelphia. And when I get my classes, this is what most people say that they do. They just go right to the keyword tool, they type in their phrase, they hit the search button, and then they're presented with a bunch of different results as you can see here. Houses in Philadelphia, 74,000 global monthly searches. And if we scroll over a bit, let's go here, uh, you can see there's 60,000 local monthly searches. So this is all over the world, of course, and this is just locally you know, in our area. The other cool thing about the keyword tool is you don't really need to know what words you're searching for because it does give you other suggestions or ideas down here underneath uh, with houses for sale in Philadelphia, open house Philadelphia, uh, housing in Philadelphia, etc. But let's take a look at some of the options over here on the side of the screen. Some people miss these checkboxes and they play a huge role in determining what type of result that we're going to get over here. So automatically Google has the term broad checked off. Well, what does that mean? Well, broad means it's going to take any synonym of the words that you're using or, you know, obviously similar phrases. It's going to just guess at other terms that are similar to houses in Philadelphia and it's going to give you a grand number down here that doesn't necessarily reflect uh, the term that you typed in up top. So very rarely do I recommend using the broad button. And you're probably thinking now, well, Steve, why, why in the world is that checked off um, if it doesn't really give us accurate results? Well, Google's whole point of the keyword tool is to try to give you or uh, try to sell you, rather, um, AdWords. So it's trying to sell you ad space and it wants you to see all of these results and uh, in your searches and you're thinking, oh great, 74,000, that's awesome. But watch what happens when we go down to the next one in line and we uncheck broad and we check exact. 320. So houses in Philadelphia went to 74,000 down to 320. What does exact mean? Well, exact means that they type the person searching typed in houses in Philadelphia, that exact phrase, that exact order, nothing more or nothing less. So obviously you're going to get a lot less. Uh, the search result page will, will be a lot less because not as many people are keying that in. And you can see the discrepancy in the two variations uh, from the broad to the exact version here. But what does phrase mean? Well, phrase is a, is a pretty decent match type to use. I'm going to uncheck exact, check phrase there and it's going to give us 2,900 global monthly searches so quite a bit higher than the exact but obviously still a lot lower than the broad so 
What does phrase mean? Well, phrase means that houses in Philadelphia appeared somewhere within the search all together. So perhaps there was something before houses or perhaps there was something after houses, but houses in Philadelphia was definitely together within that search. So let me show you, I did a little bit of research here and I want to show you how this can be skewed a little bit as well. I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to go to Google Insights. Google Insights is a pretty cool another free Google tool uh, that you can use to see search queries uh, in more of a cyclical format. So in this particular search query, house, houses in Philadelphia, you could see that in October and September, each and every month here, the amount of searches for houses in Philadelphia basically skyrocket every single October. And that's interesting, and I thought about that when I ran this search, and I'm like, why in the world would this phrase skyrocket in October? And I was trying to think of what it could be, and finally I came to the conclusion that because this is a phrase search, like we were talking about here on the previous screen, phrase, that the reason why it was so high in October is because people were searching for haunted houses in Philadelphia. So you see by using phrase too, that can actually skew your results as well, like in this particular example, because most of the searches are actually coming in this particular month and people aren't searching for houses in Philadelphia, they're searching for haunted houses in Philadelphia. So depending on what you're using your keywords, to, uh, the keyword tool for, and what you're using your keywords for, that's really going to dictate the match type that you're going to select over here on the side. I don't know if I would always choose exact because, you know, the idea is you probably want as much traffic coming to your website as possible as long as, you know, it's it's semi-relevant. Of course, you want to be relevant. You don't want that bounce rate going up through the roof either. Um, but I, I think probably the phrase route is one of the best ones to use because it does give you a little bit of leeway except in this particular example. But for, um, well, let me digress here for a second. If you are a blogger and you like to put local content on your blog site due to Google's latest um, revamp that they made to their algorithm, which I made a post on uh, earlier on the Tech Savvy Agent website, so check that out. Um, but they said that the most recent results uh, or timely results will actually appear higher in the search engine ranking. So if I wanted to write a post about the best haunted houses in my area on my blog, I'd probably want to get that post out uh, maybe in September before it actually skyrockets each and every October. And because my post might be more recent than the other ones from years past, I could show up higher in the search engine ranking. So this Google Insights tool is actually really, really cool. The other thing that I found while, while researching um, what the match types and every, the exact definitions of the match types were is another neat thing, and this really has nothing to do with, I'm talk, with what I'm talking about, but I wanted to share it with you too. It's called the Wayback Machine, and you can actually go into the Wayback Machine and you can type in a website address, and that's just waybackmachine.com, and you can type in tech savvy agent. And this is just a fun thing I found. This isn't going to help you make any more money, but if I key that in and hit take me back, it shows me what my website looked like at different points and times <laughs> uh, throughout history. So if I go to 2010 and go to December here and click December 24th, it's going to load a previous version of my website. And that's what it looked like on December 24th. Pretty cool. Uh, Again, random topic I just threw in there, but hopefully I gave you a little bit more insight to the Google Keyword Tool and what the match types were on the side of the screen. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on the bottom. Steve with Tech Savvy Agent.